Okay, next we're going to check out VCAs in Reaper. Now VCAs is a new feature introduced in Reaper 5, but it's a very powerful feature for dealing with grouping our tracks. And the best way to explain how it works is to compare it to other ways of grouping our tracks, like typical track grouping or using folders. Let's review track grouping. Let's make a new track here, bring it to the top, and let's select it, go to track grouping, and make this a master. Then we'll choose these tracks and make them slaves. So now if we play our track, this fader is going to adjust the level of all the tracks together. But no audio is actually being routed to this track. This track is just controlling these faders because it's grouped. As we move it, they move together. Now if instead we use track folders, let's get rid of this group, hit none. If we made this a folder instead, all these tracks are being routed through this track. So we can still adjust the volume from here but the actual audio is being routed to this track. So we can add plugins to it, and we see the level on this meter here. But as we bring this down, notice the level on these tracks. It stays the same, because we're not adjusting the level on the individual track, just the folder, which is where the audio is being routed after here, which is why it still shows up on the meter. But that's a drawback to it. As I mentioned in the folder video, let's make a send, but not have it in the folder. And let's send from our kick track. Drop it on here. And it's a post fader send. We'll take it out of the master parent send, but we're going to see the level on the meter. And if we pull this down, watch the meter over here. Even with it all the way down, this is still getting level. So if this was a reverb or a delay or any effects return, it's still going to get the same signal being sent from our kick. So it's not going to be in proportion to our drum sound. So that's a drawback to using folders. So let's take this out of being a folder and instead. Let's make it a VCA master. We'll choose it. We'll go to track grouping. But instead of choosing master over here, we'll choose a VCA master right here. And we'll choose these tracks and make them VCA slaves. Let's close it. And now let's see what happens. Notice the fader is still controlling it. But watch the meters over here. It changes the level on the individual tracks because the audio is not being routed to the VCA master. This volume and this pan are just controlling the individual tracks. That's why the level changes on the individual track meters. Now let's check out our send. Over here, watch this meter. It also goes down because we're controlling the individual tracks. It affects the post fader send. Same thing with sending from over here affects the return on our effects returns. So that's a better way of handling tracks with post fader sends. But the negative is that audio isn't going through this track. We can control the level but on this meter we're not seeing anything because no audio is being sent there. So if we put an effect on this track, 
Let's use an EQ. We'll make it a low pass. It doesn't do anything because the audio isn't being routed to this track. This track's volume and pan are just controlling the individual volumes and pans on these tracks. So it's more of a control than a bus or a folder, but it's still very powerful. Like for example, let's say we wanted to use this as a submixer. Let's change our slaves on the guitars, turn these off, and now this VCA is just controlling our drums. So it's a submixer for our drum level. As we're mixing, if the drums are too loud, we could adjust it here. Let's do the same thing for our guitars. Let's get rid of this track and make a new one. We'll put it up here. And let's make this one a VCA master. But we're going to use group two instead. VCA master, choose our guitars, and make them VCA slaves for group two. So now, this track is controlling these guitars. So we can control guitars all together with this one fader. Our drums here, and the guitars here. But we could also create VCAs that control the same things. So let's make another fader. And let's make this a VCA master. We'll use group three, VCA master. Then we'll choose all drums and the guitars, but not the VCAs, just the individual tracks, and make those VCA slaves for group three. So now the individual tracks are slaves to two different VCA groups, but they're still going to work and they mix together. So if we want to adjust the drums, we could do it here. The guitars here. And all together over here. So tracks can be VCA slaves of more than one group, which makes it a lot easier and flexible for mixing, having multiple VCA groups at the same time. Maybe one for all the vocals, another one for just the background vocals, another one just for the harmonies. So it's very flexible and powerful. But it does have limitations when we use it this way. For instance, it only controls the volume and the pan. It doesn't control the mute. So if you mute this, we still hear the drums or the guitars or both. Because like I said, the audio isn't running through the VCA master tracks. It's still over here. But we can add that control using track grouping. Let's go back to this one. So on group one, it's a VCA master. But we could add other parameters to this like mute and solo. Let's go to these tracks and do the same thing on the slave side, mute and solo. So now this VCA master still controls the drum level through a VCA, but we can also mute the drums or solo them. So it's using our VCAs and our track grouping. But notice, we're not using the parameter volume. We don't want to do that. Because if we do, use the volume master and the volume slave. If we move this fader, these faders move as well. So not only are we controlling the VCAs on the individual tracks, but we're also moving the faders. So every time we move this fader, 1 dB, we're going to hit 2 dB of change. And we don't want that. 
So when you're using VCAs, don't use the volume or the pans in our track grouping. Let's add that to our Guitar Master. Mute and solo. And let's also do it on this one. Mute and solo. And all the individual tracks. Mute and solo. So now we can mute our drums here. We could solo our drums here. We could adjust their volume through a VCA right here. We could do the same with the guitars, mute them, solo them, or adjust them here with the VCA master. And we could do everything from here. Mute, solo, and adjust it. So like I said, it's a very powerful feature. And it's even more powerful if we use it with automation or envelopes. But we're not going to get into that yet. We're going to save that for the automation video. But just know that there's more we can do with VCAs. So anyway, that's VCAs in Reaper. Let's move on. Thank you.